Hey music makers, welcome back to the studio. It's Dean and today we are doing a garage band for iPad and iPhone tutorial. And together we're gonna build a song from scratch, step by step. So this is gonna be the perfect tutorial for those of you who are brand new to GarageBand iOS. So without wasting any of your time, let's dive into GarageBand and go ahead and grab your iPad or iPhone. So to start, we're here inside of a blank music project. And the first thing we're going to do is create our main instrument line, which will serve as the backbone for all of our musical instruments to come. So the first button I wanna draw your attention to is this plus button here in the bottom left corner. When I click that button, I can create a brand new track. And now I can swipe from side to side and choose what kind of instrument or what kind of sound that I wanna add into my song next. I'm gonna start this song example with the piano and simply tap right in the middle. And now a piano pops onto my screen that I can play with my fingers, of course. And here within this piano, there are a lot of tools that are really cool, but the main one that I wanna show you is this little button right here, which offers these chords for me that I can simply play by the touch of my hand. So I could use a few notes at a time to build a chord like C or F, or G, or A minor. So this makes it really easy to play beautiful chords, but it gets even easier. If you see this button right here, when I click it, this is called the autoplay button and it brings up the autoplay menu. And now I can select from four different rhythms that will play automatically when I simply hit a note. So you get the idea. This is an incredibly powerful tool and it makes it really easy for those of you who don't play instruments to add a piano into your song. So I'm actually going to record my main instrument using this autoplay feature. And when I'm ready to record, all I have to do is hit the red record button. And then I'll hit the stop button to stop. And then if I wanna go back to the beginning of my project, I can hit this little button here. Or if I wanna to move to any specific part in my project, I can click anywhere within the timeline, within this ruler here. So before we go any further, I wanna show you one really important button. And this button toggles back and forth between two very important views. One would be the project view, where you can view your entire project as a whole, or back to instrument view, where you can see and play your different instruments. So again, that's project view or instrument view. And to add another instrument or sound to our song, we're gonna to need to go back to project view. So now we're gonna add another instrument to complement our main instrument. So again, I will hit the plus button here. And this time I'm gonna swipe on over to the guitar. And I'll simply click on the guitar itself. And now you see I have this touch play acoustic guitar. But right here, I wanna pause and show you something really cool. The smart controls feature and the autoplay feature are not just for the piano, they're for any touch instrument here on GarageBand iOS. So again, I'll hit this little button here, and now I can select different rhythms that I want my guitar to play automatically. I'm gonna go back to number two and record a guitar part on top of my piano part. And 
again, I'll hit stop. And I wanna see what I've recorded so far, so I'm gonna go back to the project view by hitting the block again. And now I can see all the tracks that I've recorded so far. In this case, just a piano and a guitar. If you see this little tab right here, you can actually place your finger there and slide it out. And here you can control the volume of the different tracks. To me, the guitar sounded a little bit quiet, so I'm gonna turn that up just a bit. And now we'll take a listen. we go much better now I also want to show you these two buttons here one is the mute button which will mute out the track if you want to test out what it sounds like without it the other button is the solo button and this button makes it to where you will hear only this track that is soloed or any other tracks that you have soloed and I show you these buttons because people commonly hit them by mistake and then they can't figure out why one of their tracks is muted or they only hear one of their tracks in the song that's probably because they have a mute button or a solo button button engaged and they don't know it. So know that's where that lives. And now I'm ready to add another track to my song. So I'll go down to the plus button again. And this time I'm gonna add drums. So I'm gonna swipe over to the drummer track. Now there are two drum tracks available to you. There's this track here that allows you to create your own custom beats in various ways, but I wanna swipe over until you get to the live drummer or what I call the automatic drummer. And when you select this track, it creates beats automatically for your song that you can adjust to your taste. So I'll click right in the middle and now you can see this yellow region where it's created a drum beat for my song. And now I'll simply hit play and see what it sounds like. So very cool and really, really easy. So I wanna bring your attention to some of the features within this drummer track. The first one is this square on the left, which is called the dynamics adjuster. And this allows you to adjust the intensity of the beat. Do you want it loud? Do you want it soft? Do you want it simple? Do you want it complex? For this case, I'm gonna say this is a verse and I want it a little more simple and a little more soft. And now let's go back and listen to what he has. Very nice, I feel like that fits a verse much better. The second thing I wanna bring your attention to is this drop down menu here. If I click it, you can actually choose between a library of preset beats. So right now we're on the half pipe beat, but let's click on Golden State and see what that sounds like. So that's obviously more dynamic, so maybe that would be good for a chorus or for an anthem at the end of your song. But now let's click here again and try another beat. Let's go to New Kicks. So that was kind of cool, kind of a halftime feel, but really you get the idea. You can click this menu and you have several options, several different beats to choose from, and you can just try out different ones until you find one that fits best with your song. In this case, I'm gonna go back to half pipe and then I'm gonna bring down the dynamics again so that we have And yes, there are more features in this window, but I don't want to overwhelm you. I want to show you the most important features. And now let's move on to our next track. So again, we'll hit this button here to take us back to project view where we can see our piano, guitar, and now our drums. And I want to add two more tracks to round out this song. So first I'm going to hit the plus button again. And this time I'm going to slide over to the bass track, the bass guitar track. And I'll simply click right in the middle on the guitar itself. And now this really cool bass comes up that I can play with my fingers. And on this instrument and any other touch instrument, if you hit this little blue button here, it toggles back and forth from an actual bass to a smart bass. And here within the smart bass, they narrow down the notes to only the notes that are within this key, which makes it a lot easier to find the right note. But again, because this is a touch instrument, you can hit the autoplay button right here. 
And now I can choose from different bass rhythms to match my song. So let's start with this one. So I felt like number one matched my song best, so I'm gonna go back to the beginning, hit record, and try out a bass line. So that is so cool and I think you're starting to get the idea of how powerful these touch instruments really are. If I flip back over to Project View, you can see a piano line, a guitar line, and now a bass line that I've created just by a few clicks of my fingers. And more than that, I've created a drum part just as easily. And this now represents a four piece band, all of which was simply played by me touching my screen. So last and finally, it is time for us to get into vocals. And this is where it gets truly exciting. I'll hit the plus button again. And this time we'll slide over until we see the microphone or the voice track. And of course I'll click on voice. And you'll see a menu that looks something like this. You have a few parameters that you can adjust, but before we go any further, I wanna stop here and recommend that you always wear headphones when recording with a microphone or recording even using your built-in microphone within GarageBand iOS. And that's because if I record without using headphones, using my built-in microphone or an outboard microphone, the sound from my other tracks will bleed into my vocal recordings and it'll just make for a muddy mess in the end. So now that we've got headphones, I wanna show you a few features here on this board. The first one is the monitor button, which I can turn on and off here. And as you can hear, when I turn it on, I can hear myself through the headphones. This is really handy when you're recording your voice because it allows you to hear yourself in your headphones along with any processing effects. So what I'm gonna do right now is simply record a vocal idea and then I'll come back and talk to you about different ways to process or add effects to that vocal. Now that I'm done with that recording, I can hit play to listen back to it. But I can also come into this menu and make some adjustments. And here are the two main ones that I wanna show you. Number one is this vocal hall knob. Vocal hall is another name for reverb in this case. And so if I turn it up, you can hear the more dramatic reverb on my voice. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. The other knob that I want to bring your attention to is this pitch control knob right here in the center, which of course will rein in the pitch of your vocal. So obviously the more that I push this up, the more extreme the pitch control gets. So obviously that's way too much for this song, but somewhere about halfway or maybe a little less can actually be helpful for moving your vocal just a bit more in tune. But before we finish with vocals, I wanna show you one more feature. If you click this blue dial up here, GarageBand iOS gives you a number of presets that you can choose at one click. So we'll start first with the clean preset. Da -da 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 
Now we'll skip over the monster and the robot because I don't think we need to test those in this video. We'll go on down to Dreamy. Da, 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 yeah. so that one was kind of cool. Let's skip over Megaphone and Telephone and go to Extreme Tuning. Da, 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 yeah. So if you're brand new to this and you need just a one-click preset, here is a great menu for you. And again, you can find it by clicking this little dial here, which toggles back and forth between the presets or between you mixing your own sounds. So one more time, we're gonna head back over to Project View. And I wanna make a note here that you can add almost as many instruments and vocals as you want. You don't just have to stick to these. You could add a lot more instruments. You could also add a lot more vocals if you have a background vocal or a harmony or even two. And I also wanna note that a lot of the instruments available to you aren't just for this band or singer songwriter style song. You can click on things like the Alchemy synth and you have tons of really cool, more electronic or produced sounds. So before we finish out this video, I wanna show you just a few more little tools because you'll probably be asking about them. First is this little plus button here on the right. When I click that, I can actually add sections to my song or lengthen my song. So if I hit add, now my song just got twice as long. I can also select a certain section and hit duplicate and it will actually duplicate the work that I've already done without having to redo it. And then when I wanna pass from one section to another, I can swipe like this, or I can again hit that plus button and hit all sections up top, which allows me to view the entire project in one setting. Now I will say that when I'm working on a particular part, I definitely like to zoom into one section so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Then the last thing I'll show you is if you hit this button here, you can actually change the tempo or the timing or the speed of your song by either clicking up here or even by tapping it in there. You can also change the time signature or even the key of your song if you know what that is. If not, then just leave this alone. Now, obviously there are a lot more features for us to cover, but these are the ones that I feel like are most important for making songs and doing it really fast. If you're interested in diving deeper, I actually have a 25 video course where we look at all of these features in much more detail. You can find the link for that course in the description below. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you have a question, be sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to it. And again, I wanna mention that I actually have a 25 part course on GarageBand for iPad and iPhone. So if you wanna break this down in a lot more detail, then check out the link in the description below. This has been Dean from the Songwriting Studio and I will catch you in another video very soon.